We're not shuffling. Ooh. Yeah, just like once, once a month. Once a month. I think. You're going to pick. I'm going to pick. Where were you in the 90s? In the 90s? Mm-hmm. Um, at home? <laughs> Being a kid? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Not much going on. <laughs> yeah, I was like, what? You know, a young teenager in the mid, well, later 90s, I guess. Hmm. Preteen. <laughs> yeah. Just going to school, coming home, hanging out. Watching your TRL. Watching TRL. <laughs> Loving my like <laughs> pop music at the time. Hello everybody and welcome to Nathan on Shuffle and to our latest episode of Prog Song Sunday. I've got Jana with me. Hi. And this is the show where we listen to a prog song together and it's a first listen for Jana and we just have fun listening and getting her impressions and thoughts on her first listen of it. <laughs> They're so valuable. <laughs> <laughs> and we're doing something a little bit different this year, so I thought it would be fun to each month to feature a different notable prog band from the 70s that I think are like the, the big bands that are highly recommended and are like the founders of the genre, the like big, <laughs> big name artists that were the biggest in progressive rock, you know, for January, uh, January's Jethro Tull month. Yeah, Jethro Tull month I thought would be fun to start it off with. So there's going to be several Jethro Tull theme shows throughout the month. And we're going to start with a reaction from Jethro Tull. So for each of these months, I thought I'd pick like one of the bigger, uh, songs that we haven't done yet by these artists or continuing some stuff that we started but haven't finished yet. In this case, I thought Thick as a Brick Part 2 would be the right way to go because we did Part 1 probably over a year ago. I don't even remember when it was. So you probably <laughs> have like no memory of what it sounded like. No. <laughs> <laughs> so we're just going to jump into Part 2 and see the... The second half of it. Okie so, dokie. Yeah. It's 21 minutes long. Oh, your favorite. We haven't done like kind of an epic in a while, right? I know. So It's almost as if someone went through the list and deleted all the epics. Oh, is that why they're not coming out? <laughs> no, I'm just, <laughs> I'm just kidding. kidding. <laughs> so I know a lot of people will say, that you know. That would be funny to do. We should have listened to this as a whole thing, but you know, I've got to consider. They don't know me. Consider Jana and what she can handle, and I think splitting it into parts makes the most sense. So this is basically like side two of the vinyl, you Mm -hmm. know, that's why it's split into two parts. It's really one song that's like 42 minutes long, but split into two parts only to fit on vinyl because you can only fit 20 minutes or so on a side. So here's part two. Let's listen in how this track concludes here.
to pick up your dead As the sins of the fathers are fed With the blood of the fools and the thoughts of the wise And from the pen under your bed Well, let me make you a present of song As the wise man breaks wind and is gone While the fool with the hourglass is cooking his goose and the That's it. 
That was quite the journey. <laughs> that was a good ride, wasn't it? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I hope I can remember everything that I want to talk about. That's what's hard about these longer epics. Like <laughs> should have been taking notes. <laughs> you start to forget what happened in the first part. My favorite part of the whole song was the last stanza. It was so yeah. pretty. <laughs> I loved it. <laughs> it did very well. Um, okay. Let's go back to the beginning here. <laughs> <laughs> Try to it was rewind your mind. generally a weird, enjoyable experience. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. That's what you could say so, about Prague in general. Yeah, pretty much. This is like <laughs> epitome of like weird Prague. <laughs> So, it started off, I don't remember exactly, but then it went very quickly into, like, this drum solo, yeah. flute, like, duet. <laughs> sure. <laughs> Which was really fun, but really yeah. wacky, and I always appreciate the use of silence in music. Like, yeah, when they utilize everything that. shuts down for, like, a second. Mm-hmm. This was, seemed like three or four <laughs> seconds, and so I was like, "Did our music like what happened? Did yeah. we lose? Did we lose the feed? What happened here?" <laughs> um, and it happened like, well, I mean, the first time it, I was surprised. Yeah. The second and but then it kept happening. Third time, and, you were used and I'm to it. like, "Okay, I got it. They'll start up. Just wait. Hold on. Hold on. <laughs> Just huh? give it a They're second. They're gonna start again, and then they did." So, yeah. um, great use of silence. So, like, I feel like that is, I feel like it always has an impact, mm. you know? Um, and so that was, like, towards the end of that section. And then, like, when it restarted again for the last time, there it was, like, had this different sound. So it was, like, yeah. a new song. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Gets into a new section. Yeah. Uh, which I enjoyed that section a lot. I thought that was really, really cool. <laughs> There's a lot to it, right? Yeah. Okay, you talk some. <laughs> <laughs> well, I love this piece of music. I mean, Thick as a Brick by Jethro Tull is legendary, and it's one of my all-time favorite progressive rock pieces of music. Of course, the whole thing combined, this is only the second half, but it closes yeah. just so fantastically. Was the first half like this? Yeah, it has, okay. you know, and it has a lot of callbacks to parts from the, okay. from the first half and stuff. So it's a very much a long, continuous suite that... Mm -hmm. stays in the same style and calls back to earlier moments and yeah. reprises themes and all that okay. kind of stuff that all the best prog does. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. There was a section like maybe in the 15 minute mark. Okay. I don't know. Yeah. I can't remember. That was like a good rocking section. Yeah. And, like you were like, <laughs> like totally gone. Yeah. I don't remember exactly where it was. I got lost at some point. So. Right. Yeah, the whole final eight minutes or so, you know, mm -hmm. that whole last section is just perfection. I love it. Because it, it showcases <laughs> some of those cool proggy chops, but then also mm -hmm. has moments of like beauty. And there's like those strings that kind of come about mm -hmm. at the end. And, you know. There was a moment where I was listening intently to the singer. Yeah. And he was mostly in one ear, mm -hmm. but then there was like a faint singer also singing along, not doing harmony, <laughs> just like the same notes, uh -huh. but someone else just doing like, just to fill in the vocal a little bit. And so like, it was like a second singer doing the same song, uh -huh. same song, <laughs> <laughs> doing the same like. Melody and everything, yeah. not a, I mean, and occasionally they would break into harmonies and, mm -hmm. and, you know, but it, but I heard it like very, like it was a lot softer in my right ear. Interesting. And, but the main singer was like in my left ear. So okay. it was kind of cool. cool. I like, I like that little effect. Like, like, cause I was like listening to it. I'm like, is that somebody else singing? And there was more than one person. <laughs> so, um, but his, but the main singer was voice was so like, loud like prominent you know sure. um that i wasn't even sure but then like like just spent some time like focusing in on that so interesting yeah. i don't know that's cool a little thing that i picked up yeah so it, <laughs> like you said there's just a lot going on here it's hard to pick out all the stuff that's going on but yeah it's just really cool all the way through and great work on the flute you know they're known for their prominent flute work in the band there's yeah, some great that was great acoustic guitar sections that i love when they get more into that acoustic section 
Um, love some of the fast pace, you know, proggy kind of stuff that they get into as well. And yeah, Ian Anderson's vocals are all really great. I love his like really interesting, quirky lyrics, you know, throughout the whole thing. They're really interesting to listen to mm. and a lot of yeah. cool little turns of phrases and things that he's doing. And so it's just all in all, just all together really great. I like his voice. Yeah. I think it's, it's a great voice. Yeah. Just a great great voice yeah back in these classic <laughs> days you know it's just a perfect voice you know mm-hmm. one of the best of this era so definitely really yeah. cool i agree so you enjoyed it it was I a did. hit even though it was long for you yeah i mean of course it was long and and you know as it changed over like every four or five minutes to a new sound i'm like why couldn't these have just been different songs yeah well, some but that's you know, it, debate. you could <laughs> you could split them out to different parts. There's yeah. different versions of the album where they kind of split it into different parts. You know, technically on the track listing mm-hmm. or whatever. Like the streaming version, as a little weird aside, I was choosing between two different versions for us to listen to today. But I chose this one that's a little bit of an older uh, remaster from like 1997 or something because it's. All together as one like full mm. piece, whereas the Stephen Wilson more recent remakes was broken out into different parts. And I know when we did that for a previous song, I think it was Baker Street Muse. Like between each transition, it would like have a second like gap yeah. moving to the next track, and I didn't want that to spoil yeah. the song. So I thought it would be better as a continuous That's why one it's track. Twentieth. 25th anniversary version of it. Huh? Yeah, this was okay. like the older 25th anniversary, whereas Stephen Wilson has done a more recent remix that sounds really good. And I, I, I wish I could have brought that in, but, you know, mm. they sound similar enough. And, you know, you can go seek that version out as well. But that was my thinking. I didn't want it to, like, pause just even for a second between sections because right. that would just be jarring. And I wanted a continuous feel for the music. I feel like I'm going to be pondering this song for a long time. Well, that's Thinking good. about it. That's, I, I, that's a good feature of progressive rock, I think, yeah, is that it gives you think. a lot to think about. And you could listen to this over and, and over and something still different. Yeah, pull out different things yeah. and have different impressions. And that's what's cool. Like sometimes... Not to, I, I love a good pop song, but sometimes <laughs> you hear it once and you kind of, you know it. You've you know? heard it. <laughs> <It's>, <laughs> there's not much more to pull from it. And yeah. as fun as it is to listen to, it's, you know, there's not as much depth. But mm-hmm. stuff like this has a lot of depth and a lot you can pull out and analyze yeah. and learn new things about. You know, people in the comments are constantly like bringing out new things I didn't know about this album or this, you know, different stuff in the sound. So cool stuff well cool all right thanks for sharing that with me yeah no problem this is my greatest joy is to be able to share (laughs) my favorite music with you so it works out all right so thank you guys for joining us hopefully you enjoyed the episode uh let us know in the comments how you feel about this song this album about jethro tull in general i'll be doing more jethro tull content hopefully throughout the month that's the plan at least so hopefully you guys will enjoy that and just as always enjoy the music everybody bye bye